fellow on. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah. This will be Who Are the Gentiles in the New Testament, the finale, episode 2, The Love and the Hate. And before we begin, a brief message. Popular consensus in the quote unquote Christian church is that God is all love. He loves all of his creation and that is it. He loves you, so he wants you to repent. But the you is very vague in the quote unquote Christian church and leads people into insurmountable levels of confusion. In case I have not made this clear enough in the first few installments of this series, I hope this last one puts the nail in the coffin. This is not a dichotomy between Yahweh or who Yahweh hates and who he loves, but a simple hammering of the numerous times the Most High expresses his love for his people. Now, I am in no way saying the Most High has never rebuked his people. We're stating he has never expressed any other emotion for his people. This is simply a buildup of a point showing his love for his people and we will begin with the following. Exhibit A. This is Malachi the first chapter in the first verse. The burden of the word of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith Yahweh, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith Yahweh? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. So the Most High God states explicitly that he loves the most, or, or sorry, that he loves Jacob, or he loved Jacob, or he chose Jacob, and he hated Esau, or he rejected Esau. It says he hated Esau, okay? Verse 3 again. And I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste with the dragons of the wilderness. Deuteronomy the 8th chapter, the 5th verse. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so Yahweh your God disciplines you. So, my brothers that have fathers out there, you know that if you do the wrong thing, then your father's going to discipline you. Okay? Or he's going to chastise you, as it says in the KJV. So, if you do the wrong thing and, the, and uh, your father chastises you, why is he doing it? Because he wants you to do the right thing. Or he doesn't want you to do the wrong thing. It's not that difficult. That's the same way the Most High God disciplines the nation of Israel, his chosen people. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the 8th verse, and the NLT. If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. It's not that hard. Okay, it's pretty simple. So, the same way a father loves his son, and corrects his son. The same way the Most High God loves the nation of Israel and he corrects the nation of Israel. And guess what? If you can't take that chastisement or that correction or that discipline, then guess what? You are a bastard. Okay? You are no son of the Most High. Alright? Nonetheless, Amos, the third chapter. Hear this word that Yahweh hath spoken against you. O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So the Most High God is speaking through the prophet Amos to the nation of Israel, stating explicitly, The nation of Israel is the only nation he has known or dealt with. And if we go off, then we will be punished for our transgression, for our transgressions, okay? Exhibit B, the execution of the curse, Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, the 15th verse. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, if we don't do the commandments of the Most High God, 
these curses are going to come upon us. Just like a father would tell his son, if you don't clean your room, then guess what? You're going to get a whooping. All right? If you don't do this, that, or the third, this, that, and the third is going to happen to you. Leviticus, the 26th chapter, the 14th verse in the KJV. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, so if we don't listen to the Most High God, verse 15, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, so if we break the deal that we made with the Most High God by breaking his laws, verse 16, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. So, all that we do in order to gain increase, our enemies are going to eat of it. They're going to take up the spoil or the, or I guess we say the treasure of our, of our labor, okay? Or the fruit of our labor. Daniel, the ninth chapter, the 11th verse, in the KJV. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey the voice, or Salakia, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. So as it states in Deuteronomy the 28th chapter and the 15th verse, as it states in Leviticus the 26th chapter and the 14th verse or the 16th verse, if we transgress the law of the Most High God, then we will have the curse poured out upon us. And that is why the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, the other, the other Israelites scattered across the four corners of the earth are going through turmoil right now because we've transgressed the law of God and we've turned our backs on the law of the Most High. Exhibit C, the patience of the saints. Okay? Now, before we go into this, just understand that there will be a righteous remnant of Israelites that are chosen, the elect of Israel, all right, to bring in the nation of Israel underneath our King Yahweh Shai, underneath the Most High God. So, here we go. Micah 7, the 7th chapter and the 8th verse in the KJV. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, Yahweh shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of Yahweh because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Then... She that is mine enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is Yahweh thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her now. Shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets? So the enemies of the nation of Israel, the elect of the Israelites, are going to be destroyed. Or Salaki, or the, yes, the enemies of the Israelites will be destroyed and trodden down as the mire of the streets. Once the Most High God reconciles the nation of Israel back to that land, that beautiful land. Once the elect is declared, the enemies of the Most High God are going to be completely destroyed. Okay? Second Maccabees, the seventh chapter. Afterward, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. So this is a son. Here, a son of a woman. I was being put through agony and torture because they did not want to eat swine's flesh. They did not want to eat pig, pork. An issue that the Israelites have right now that, that they can't seem to shake. Okay? I don't know about right now, but back then, brothers and sisters had a, a bit of something called integrity. That they did not want to even look like they were sinning. Okay? So let's look at this. The 16th verse. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men. Like in America, the president, the president of the United States of America has power over men. Okay? Let's 
So start, start over. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men. Thou art corruptible. Thou doest what thou wilt. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of God. So the nation of Israel has not been forsaken of the Most High God. Okay. We're going to nail that thing home. Okay. For all you idiots out here that want to run your mouth talking about the nation of Israel sinned and now they're not the people anymore. Well, check this out. We're going to read this again. Afterward, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men. Thou art corruptible. Thou doest what thou wilt. Yet think not. I mean, don't even think about it. That our nation is forsaken of God. But abide a while, behold his great power. How he will torment thee and thy seed. So, you just wait a few minutes. Alright? You just hold on to your britches. And understand that the Most High God is going to torment you and your seed. Exhibit D. The children of the Most High. Exodus the 4th chapter, the 22nd verse, and the KJV. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith Yahweh, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So the nation of Israel is the record of the Most High God. Okay? Joel, 5th chapter, the 17th verse in the NIV. Blessed is the one whom God corrects. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. For he wounds, but he also binds up. He injures, but he, his hands also heal. So the same way the Most High God, or sorry, the same way a father might bark at his son whenever he's trying to correct him. If he's a coach, trying to tell him to do this, that, and the third, and he's getting frustrated with them, and he has to smack him around a little bit, and say, wake up. Don't do that, do this. The same way, whenever he does the right thing, or he's, or the son shows some sort of uh, frustration because he wants to do the right thing, that father is gonna build that child up. He's gonna look at him in the face and say, you got this, wake up, it's gonna be okay. Keep on working. The same way the Most High God throws adversity at his people, he also shows favor and mercy to his people. Psalm 47, the second verse. For Yahweh, Most High, is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, say love. The Most High God loved Jacob. He's loved the excellency of Jacob, the nation of Israel. Yet again, there's a juxtaposition between the nation of Israel and these other nations. So if you're talking about the Gentiles and the New Testament are not the Israelites, this can't be correct. There will be a contradiction in the Bible. And there is not a contradiction in this case. Exhibit E, the children of the Most High. Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, the third verse in the KJV. For I am Yahweh thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. And I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. So that means he gave up these people of Egypt and Ethiopia. Okay? And he gave them up for the nation of Israel. Right? Jeremiah 31 and 3 in the KJV. Yahweh hath appeared of old time, so like it. Yahweh hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Who's the virgin of Israel? The elect of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tablets. 
and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Okay? As I addressed in the previous installment of this series, the word reconciliation or reconciling or reconciling, it states it explicitly numerous times. Again, I will build thee. Okay? So we're going to go to Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, and the 25th verse in the NLT. But this is what Yahweh says. I would no more reject my people than I would change my laws that govern night and day, earth and sky. So the Most High God said, before I, before I reject the nation of Israel, I'm going to reject the night and the day and the earth and the sky and my dominion over those things. Verse 26. I will never abandon the descendants of Jacob or David. You hear that one? I will never abandon the descendants of Jacob or David, my servant, or change the plan that David's descendants will rule the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who's that one of David's descendants? Yahweh Shahimashiach himself, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. All right? Instead, I will restore them. I will restore them to their land and have mercy on them. So the nation of Israel will be restored. Going back to the word reconcile. I will restore them to their land and have mercy on them. What did the nation of Israel need mercy from? The judgment, the curse the nation of Israel has put upon them. Okay? Now what we have all been waiting for, John 3.16 in the KJV, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In this installment of this series, I'm going to tackle the word world. We don't want to make this too long, so we're just going to break that word down so you can get some understanding on this word. Now, Exhibit F, Isaiah, the 45th chapter and the 14th verse in the KJV. Thus saith Yahweh, the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabines, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee in chains. They shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. So it states explicitly that these Egyptians and Ethiopians will be coming in chains and falling before the nation of Israel. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Verse 15. Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. Why did they say the God of all people? This is a future prophecy. So in the future, shouldn't we see all nations bowing down who the world calls Jesus Christ? It doesn't say that. It keeps on saying the God of Israel. Verse 16. They shall be ashamed. Who is they? The other nations. They shall be ashamed. And also confounded. All of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. Verse 17. But Israel shall be saved and Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. Who's going to be saved? Israel. With a what? An everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. Okay? Who is that world being spoken of in John the third chapter in the 16th verse? The nation of Israel. Wisdom of Solomon, 18 and 24. For in the long garment was the whole world, and in the four rows of the stones was the glory of the Father's grave, and thy majesties upon the diadem of his head. So the whole world was in this long garment, 
and there were four rows of stones in this glorious garment. Now, let's see what this is referring to. Exodus 39 and 1 in the KJV and of the blue and purple and scarlet they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place and made the holy garments for Aaron as the as Yahweh commanded Moses verse 14 and the stones were according to the names of the children of Israel 12 according to their names so these stones that were in the four rows of this glorious garment spoken of in Wisdom of Solomon, the 18th chapter, and this glorious long garment were the names of the 12 tribes. Let's keep reading. According to their names, like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name according to the 12 tribes. So again, Wisdom of Solomon, 18 and 24. For in the long garment it was the whole world. And in the four rows of the stones was the glory of the Father's grave, and thy majesty upon the diadem of his head. Again, that world spoken of in John 3.16 is the nation of Israel. I want to say all praise to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Isaiah, the 8th chapter, the 20th verse, and the KJV. Again, that the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. We will be going into the New Testament in the next installment of this series. We have tackled every single verse, point you can in the Old Testament. So, if these are not correct, if these numerous verses here in the OT are not correct, or if these Gentiles in the New Testament are of the other nations, then that means we have a lot of false prophecy going on in the Old Testament. And that must be answered to. I don't believe there's any false prophecy in the Old Testament going on. Nonetheless, stay tuned for the final episode. Again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, you are edified. Shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom.